What is up with all of the vending machines in Japan? Well, Japan harbors a culture of convenience, which couldn't be made any more obvious than by the thousands of vending machines all over the country. Around every corner, you can find a cluster of machines ranging from drinks to hot meals and even hosting things like umbrellas, fruits, and action figures. With one vending machine per 23 Japanese citizens, the $60 billion industry is always a must do for anyone visiting Japan. But they're not all sugary drinks and tasty snacks. In fact, some of them can be pretty odd. So we set out to find the top 10 craziest vending machines we could find in Tokyo, Japan. Number one, spicy snacks. Tucked 20 minutes from the Mitukadai station, is a beautiful park known as Kichijoji Inokashira Park. It's filled with dozens of children playing in the water, families relaxing and enjoying a nice warm day, and plenty of summer breeze and shady trees. This park is also home to a nature reserve, some beautiful Japanese architecture, a zoo, and the world famous Ghibli Museum. Tucked right in the center of the park is Cafe Sublime, where you can find these spicy looking snacks. One of them is even known as the Devil King of Death. During the summer, you can cool down afterwards with some ice cream right next door. But if you're visiting during the winter and looking for a way to warm up, look no further than these spicy snacks. Number two, bread in a can. Right around the corner is the next vendo on our list. This may be the first time you've seen bugs in a vending machine, but it's definitely not going to be the last one on this top 10 list. While this vending machine has some pretty odd things such as bee larvae, which is over $20 per can, or some grasshoppers, we're not here for the bugs, but something a little more peculiar. Bread in a can. I got strawberry, chocolate, and down here is apple. It turns out it's a pretty common snack in Japan as emergency food despite having significantly tastier treats at konbinis around every corner. We decided to go with the apple flavored bread, and while it wasn't our favorite snack, we could definitely see how this would be a fan favorite. Does it taste good though? No. Number three, cigarettes and alcohol. Remember when we said that convenience is a crucial part of Japanese culture? It should come as no surprise to find that it's easy to obtain alcohol and cigarettes from vending machines across the country. But given that the drinking and smoking age in Japan is 20, how do they keep the kids from accessing it? Two ways, a TASPO card or a Japanese driver's license, neither of which are available to tourists. So if you're planning to visit, you're out of luck and you're gonna have to get your fix the old fashioned way. Number four bug snacks. Remember when we said that wouldn't be the last bug vendo on the list? How about a vending machine dedicated solely to those creepy critters? <coughs> At the Takadanobaba station, right outside of Kometo Circus Izakaya, which is a small hole in the wall restaurant known for their odd delicacies, including boar, bear, rabbit, ostrich, camel, and more, we find the Moog bug vendo. Despite the relatively cute exterior and packaging, this company prides itself on serving up some fairly unappealing insects, including crickets, scorpions, and silkworms, in a variety of flavors from roasted to barbecue. You can enjoy your bugs either as a whole or ground up into energy bars packed with kneaded crickets and chocolate. Needless to say, we skipped this one. Number five, dashi soup. There's probably nothing weirder than running across a vending machine filled with bottles of whole fried flying fish. Dashi soup stock is a base ingredient found in many Japanese dishes like ramen. While you can find the dashi soup vendos all over Japan, the one that we found was inside of Roppongi Hills, which is a neighborhood filled with high class stores, amazing street art, and beautiful views no matter which way you look. While our vending machine just had pictures of what it would look like, some vending machines let you see the actual product, making for a pretty odd sight of the briny broth. So if you decide to buy one, don't get it mixed up with your tea or you're going to be in for a salty surprise.
<sighs> Akihabara, the otaku capital of the world. Packed with lights, maid costumed ladies lining the street, and shops brimming with any weeb's greatest dreams. Akihabara is our must go to place to find some of the strangest vendos in Japan. And with it taking up five of our top 10 list, do not miss out on this place. Number six, Rare Milk. On platform five of the Akihabara JR station, you'll find an odd vending machine with an udder sticking out of the bottom. Yes, you heard me correct, as in a cow udder. This vending machine is packed with rare milk and coffee from the Fukushima prefecture. Something to know is that part of the revenue from this vending machine goes to the city of Kumamoto, which is still recovering from a massive earthquake in 2016. We ended up trying the exclusive Cafe Ole, which is only available in either Fukushima or through this machine. That is um, actually really good coffee though. Like it kind of has like a caramel aftertone to it. It's good. Yeah, I actually like this way better than the other stuff. As well as the vanilla milk from Kumamoto. Even though these are flavors in nearly any vending machine in Japan, they definitely had a subtler and less artificial flavor to them. And they are an absolute must try when visiting. Number seven, idol photos. All throughout Akihabara, you'll find streets packed with gacha machines and idol photos? Yes, you heard that right. Photos, DVDs, you name it. These vending machines are dedicated to some of Japan's most famous female idols. If you're looking for idols like BTS, like Jackie was, you're definitely in the wrong place. But if you're looking for a small trinket to take home and stare at, it's not gonna be hard to find one of these vending machines. Number eight, a fancy meat sandwich. One of Akihabara's most famous restaurants, Niku no Manse, can be tough to get a seat at, especially when you're dealing with all these COVID restrictions. But that doesn't mean you need to miss out. Right across the street from the towering restaurant, which you can easily identify by the giant red cow cartoon on the side of the building, lies a small huddle of vendos hidden beneath the train tracks. One of them includes sandwiches from the restaurant itself, which are made fresh daily. These sandwiches are served cold, but they're so delicious. On either side of the vending machine are also small tables that you can eat at, as well as washlets to clean up before chowing down. We ended up picking the most expensive sandwich on the menu, a heaping sandwich with not one but two slabs of tonkatsu, or fried pork cutlet, sandwiched between two sweet slices of milk bread and smothered in a sweet and savory tonkatsu sauce. Because this sandwich took us three days to eat, we would definitely recommend starting with the normal pork cutlet sandwich, unless you're ready to go into a food coma for the rest of the night. We also tried the less expensive pork and beef hamburger cutlet sandwich, which was soft, flavorful, and a perfect package of delight. Number nine, the King's Treasure Box. If you're about to leave Japan and you've got some extra yen to burn, what better way than to spend it at the King's Treasure Box? There's always a chance to get something really, really cool. Just know that more often than not, you'll leave wishing you had never played in the first place. There are various King's Treasure Boxes all around Akihabara with prices ranging from 1,000 to 2,000 yen, or roughly 10 to $20 a pop. We ran into a $20 one, and after debating whether to take the extra half hour to find the cheaper one, we settled on taking a shot. It is a train your brain, adults, DS training. We were utterly disappointed. But that's not to say that it might not be worth it. After all, look at all the pictures of the winners. There's always next time. Number 10, the creepy vending machine corner. The perfect way to end the top 10 list of strangest and most unique vendos in Tokyo is to make a pit stop at Akihabara's very own creepy vending machine corner and boy does it earn its name. Oh, uh oh. I'm going inside. Whoa, this is so creepy. I hate this. What is this? A nightmare for anyone with claustrophobia. This narrow cluster of vendos are reminiscent of a childhood nightmare with an eerily quiet ambience. 
What the f I swear to God, I just heard, I heard a footstep behind us. So, uh, the reason the camera quality just went down is because we just switched to an iPhone. Um, I was filming and then my camera overheated and my phone was like, no, I can't do it. It turned itself off. So, ghosts? Maybe. A five minute walk away from the Akihabara JR station, this place is tucked away from the main road and gave us the creeps, especially given the fading daylight. Packed into the musty miniature caverns were an assortment of intimidating signs that ranged from warnings that the area is not a toilet, legal warnings for littering, threats of bodily harm for delinquents, and even some signs that are, well, we'll just say they're not safe for work. From popcorn machines to train models, you could find all sorts of oddities in this labyrinth. Some of the strange things we found were snails, jams, toy beetles, more canned bread, and supon, or soft shell turtle soup. What drew us there was the mysterious packages that are wrapped up in paper with strange stories written on them. These are mystery objects and each of them have a story written on them. And some of the stories are really scary. Some of them I don't, I don't actually know. I can't read any of these obviously. Infection, <laughs> explosion, guy who wants to do anything, I is there. Someone wants to eat a poisonous head. What? <laughs> Despite our bad luck at the king's treasure box, we dropped another 10 bucks on one with a plea to the Japanese government for financial aid for essential workers during the pandemic. Arriving home, we discovered a second hidden note on the bottom, which talked about the Otsuka Furniture Company scandal, asking for the father and daughter of the company to be nice to each other, something we discovered later on to be old news. Unlike so many before us who got some pretty interesting things, we got really lucky with what we found on the inside. Four boxes of three pack chocolate Kit Kats. Maybe our luck was turning around after all. Oh wow. my gosh, it's Kit Kats. Are they really? Yeah. We paid $10 for four boxes of Kit Kats? Yeah, we sure did. I'm actually super thrilled about this. This was a good purchase. Mm -hmm. Are they expired? Yes. <laughs> They go bad in August of this year, so we have a day to eat them all. <laughs> to the freezer! And that wraps up our top 10 bendos in Tokyo, Japan. Which of these would you visit? Let us know in the comments down below. And please don't forget to like and share. It really helps our channel out so much, and we're so thankful for all of your support. If you're new here and like what you see, consider subscribing for more Japanese videos. Thanks again for watching! And as always, stay safe, stay happy, most importantly, stay you. See you guys again next time, and until then, we hope you have a magically wonderful day. Bye!